<laughs> Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. Today I want to talk to you all about breeding goats. We're going to go over how to know that your girls are in heat, your options for getting a buck and getting them bred, and how to tell if they're pregnant. Now the first step is selecting out the does that you want bred for that season. Now we have 11 does in our herd that we want to get pregnant this year. And that's four less than we had last year. We ended up selling two of them as does and milk. And then there's two more that I've decided I just don't want to breed anymore. And what I'm looking for mainly is a good healthy doe that can support a pregnancy and nurse her babies. If they've had babies before, I will select for ease of birth. So if they've been able to have babies unassisted in the past and if they're good mothers, if they nurse them and take care of them as they should. Also, I'm looking for how healthy their babies are and how well they thrive in my herd. And then of course, I'm thinking about my goals for this herd. So we breed for both meat and milk. So I want my male kids to have a lot of muscle and meat and big bone structure on them. And I want my females to have nice udders for milking. So you may be wondering what age you can breed your does. And that really depends on the individual animal. You never want to breed a doe younger than about seven or eight months because gestation is five months long. And you want to make sure they're at least a year old when they give birth. But what's more important in my mind is their size and how well they've grown. So you want to make sure that doe at breeding age is about 75 to 80% the size that she will be as an adult. So you want to have good weight on them. If you're talking about a Nigerian dwarf, that's about 50 pounds. If you're talking about a larger dairy breed or a meat breed, that's about 80 pounds. And if you want to have milk, you have to breed your does. Now you can keep them in milk for quite a while. Most does are expected to be in good milk for at least 10 months, but I've known people that will just milk their does through without having to breed them again for years and years. So it really depends on the individual doe, but most people will dry their does off at about 10 months post kidding and then rebreed them every year. And breeding means in five months, you're gonna have some babies. So you need to have a plan for what you're gonna do with those babies. We might sell a few of our babies, but most of them are gonna get raised up for meat. And then a very select few of the females we will keep as future milk does. Now, most goats are seasonal breeders, meaning they will only come into heat certain times of the year. The, a notable exception to that is the Nigerian dwarf that can be bred any time of the year. But for most goats, they're gonna come into heat in the fall. So maybe as early as July and as late as December in our region. But they're most likely to be in heat and receptive to breeding in September, October. We're here in late August and we like to have our babies a little earlier in the year when it's colder here. So we're doing our breeding now. But we are in North Carolina in the Southern US. So it, we don't have really frigid, icy winters here. But when it's a little bit colder, the parasites are less, there's less flies around. And we're putting most of our animals in a fixed barn situation anyway, so they have good shelter and we can keep a close eye on them. So for us, that works really well. A lot of people, especially in colder climates, will wait to breed in maybe November, December and then they'll have their babies in April and May when there's a lot of grass available and it's warmer and you don't have to worry about kids being born on icy ground. So it really depends on your climate and your preferences for management. Once your goats start to cycle, they will come into heat about every 18 to 24 days. So on an average, every 21 days. And if you start seeing your does come into heat, it's a good idea to mark that on the calendar and start keeping track of their cycle. And that will allow you to know the best time to introduce a buck to them. Some of the signs that your does are coming into heat are they may become more vocal. Their behavior may change in some other ways. If you have a buck on site, they may start calling for him or looking for him. If the buck is with your girls, they will definitely start flirting with him. And one of the ways that they flirt or tell the buck that they're in heat is called flagging, which they will wag their tail, almost like uh, you see white-tailed deer doing. They may also mount other goats or allow other goats to mount them. And in some cases, you may see changes in the vulva. It may become red or swollen. When my girls first start to come into heat, they are coming on the milking stand twice a day. So I'm pretty familiar with their normal behavior and I may see them start to get a little bit ornery. Their udders might be a little bit more swollen. They might not eat as much. 
just normal things that you would think of when they're undergoing hormonal changes. Now, if you have a buck in with your ladies, or sometimes even a castrated male, they will really tell you when your ladies are in heat. They will constantly be sniffing their vulvas. They will really sniff when they pee. They like to check their urine. And they will do a behavior where they lift their front lip. And that is a way of detecting those heat hormones in the urine of the does. They actually have some special receptors in the soft palate where they can detect those hormones in just the odor of the urine. Sabrina, you're not a buck. You're not a buck. You silly girl. Silly girl. You might also hear them making a blubbering noise or sticking their tongue out at the females or snorting at them, maybe rubbing on them a little bit more than usual. If the doe stands and lets him do all of that, that's also a really good sign that she's coming into heat. Once your doe comes into heat, it may last anywhere from one to three days. And if you actually see her mated by the buck, those signs of heat will dissipate pretty quickly. So how will you know if your goat is actually pregnant? Well, the best way to tell is to watch for another three weeks and see if she shows sign of coming back into heat. And if she does come back into heat, then she is not pregnant. She needs to be bred again. It's not unusual for it to take a cycle or two for them to actually get bred by the buck. You can also have a blood test done. You can do this if you can draw your own blood and send it to a lab, or you can have it done through your local veterinarian. The other option is just to wait three or four months. And if you start to see a bulge on the right side of their body, that's where they carry their babies. Also, you can watch for any udder development. So if their udder starts to fill with milk and swell, that's a surefire way to know that they're pregnant as well. Hi, Gwen. Now, after selecting your does, you need to select your buck. And this is a really important decision. Remember that he represents 50% of the genetics of all your babies. So you wanna make sure that you're picking a buck that doesn't have any major faults or problems that he could pass on to his offspring and ideally you want one that is actually improving on your current stock so that the babies are superior every generation. This year we've selected this beautiful dapple boar buck and we've rented him from a local farm. This is money. Now there are definitely some things to consider if you're gonna have a buck on your property. One, they tend to have horns and they're big so they can be dangerous. You definitely don't want to turn your back on a buck, especially one that's in rut. And especially if it's one that you're renting and you don't know that you're not familiar with, don't trust them. Money here has been real cool, but I'm still not going to turn my back on him or give him a chance to ram me. Also, bucks are notoriously stinky this time of year. They go into what's called rut, just like deer. And you can see his glorious beard down there. They will intentionally pee on that beard to make themselves stinkier. Sometimes they will pee on their legs and rub it on their head. So you really don't want to let him rub on you either. And you may notice that your does will get a little stinky. Sometimes if you're milking that, then that can transfer to the milk. You see he's rubbing on Sabrina there. Just something to be aware of when he's in with the girls. Now your options as far as obtaining a breeding buck are of course you can buy one. And in the past, that's what we've always done. We had a really nice Kiko buck that we had to get rid of because we couldn't contain him in any of our fences. And that's just too much stress to deal with. And then we had another buck, a boar buck, and he, he was pretty nice, nice and meaty, decent confirmation, really sweet personality. The trouble with that buck was that he had some genetic faults that he was passing on to his offspring. Some of his daughters were ending up with extra teats, which can make it hard for them to nurse or hard to milk them in the future. And that's not uncommon in the boar breed, but it's just not something that we want to pass on. He also was producing a lot of kids that have folded ears. You can see Sabrina is a good example of what a folded ear looks like. And she does pass that on to some of her kids. It's not ideal. We just have to make sure that she doesn't get any ear infections or problems with them. But again, I don't want a buck passing that on to all my kids. It's different if it's just one doe and I know that her kids are gonna go for meat. So it's not really an issue in that case. He also didn't have the straightest back, which again, if you're just breeding for meat, not that big a problem, but I don't want animals that are gonna have conformational issues in the future. And while he was a pretty big meaty guy, 
He's not quite as big as some of the other bucks that I've seen. So I wanted to go with a buck that's gonna produce a little more meat on his kids. So we ended up sending that buck to the processor, which left us without a breeding male for the season. So I could buy another, and a common strategy that I've heard of is to buy a young buck, use him for one breeding season, and then process him when his job is done. And that way you don't have to maintain an animal that you might wanna keep separate, that eats a lot, that might be stinky, it might be dangerous. You don't have to maintain that animal all year round. You just have them for a couple months. The other option is what we're doing now is renting a buck and that can go a couple of ways. You can either take your girls to a farm where they will allow them to hang out with their buck. They'll usually charge you a stud service fee as well as basically room and board for your girls. So whatever hay and grain and care that they need while they're there. I don't particularly like that option because I would just worry about how my girls were being taken care of, unless it was somebody I really, really trusted, or maybe somebody close by where I could check on them often. And then of course, there's the option to bring the buck to your farm. And there's some of the same concerns. I worry about somebody's valuable breeding buck maybe getting hurt or sick on my property. And in that case, I would be liable for full replacement cost to this guy. So I'm gonna do my best to keep really good care of him. And especially if you're trying to run a clean herd, you may have some biosecurity concerns about bringing in any communicable diseases with that animal. Some farms that you rent a buck from or drop your does off at will be likely to have vaccination requirements and will wanna see blood testing for any of those diseases. And the last option is AI or artificial insemination. From what I understand, it's pretty difficult in small ruminants like goats and sheep. You really wanna get a veterinarian or an experienced AI tech that knows what they're doing to do that for you. But it does offer a lot of options as far as genetic, because you can pretty much order semen from anybody that's offering it. Plus your AI tech may want you to do some hormone therapy on your does and put an insert in that will cause them to cycle on your schedule. Also, when you order the straws of semen, they come frozen in liquid nitrogen. So you would either need to have a way to receive them and store them in a nitrogen tank of your own, or know somebody where you could store them and that's often done at a fee. So while AI can offer a lot of great options, there are a lot of difficulties as well. Now Money's been here a few days and I have already witnessed him breed three of my does, which is pretty good. I've seen him flirt with probably four others. So we're just trying to keep a close eye and write those dates down when he does breed them. And he's gonna be here probably for a couple weeks. And if he doesn't get the job done and these girls cycle back, we'll either have him back out to the farm or we'll get another buck uh, from the same farm. It's actually a Nubian buck that I may wanna try. Money here was our first choice, but he is unproven. He's only about a year old, so he doesn't have any babies on the ground. And I would have liked to see some babies out of him to kind of know what we're gonna get. But for the convenience and the price on this guy, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. So really grateful to our fellow farmer, John, at the Funny Farm for making this happen for us. John plans to rent him out sort of as a, a way to make a little bit of money on this guy's stud service. So if we have some nice babies on the ground in five months, that's something that we can take pictures of and he can use to advertise him in the future. So guys, that's pretty much it. Those are the basics of breeding your goats. I hope this video helped you and I hope that you will soon have some beautiful goat kids of your own on the way. I know I'm excited for five months from now to see what kind of babies that we get this year. So definitely be sure to check back with our channel in late January and February. We'll have lots of cute baby goats to show you. <laughs>